In this video, I'll give you 10 tips on things to check before you start your training to become a commercial pilot. And let's get straight into it with tip number one. Welcome to Spruce Moose Aviation. Okay, tip number one, go and do a TIFF. What's a TIFF? A trial introductory flight. So this is a flight with an instructor sitting next to you in a light training aircraft. Normally the same aircraft that you'll train hopefully all the way up to getting your CPL, but it does give you some initial exposure to flying a light aircraft. The instructor will let you take the controls usually in your very first lesson because they have the same controls next to them. So they can always take over if you do the wrong thing. It's yeah, very, very first thing I'd recommend doing. Uh, you get to feel the aircraft for yourself. You get to feel what it's like to fly. Uh, and yeah, most flight schools will offer you a TIFF in your local aerodrome. Okay, tip number two is to go and check out what the requirements are for your CASA class one medical. If you're looking to become a commercial pilot, you'll need to be able to hold one of these for your career. So these can be a really big hurdle for anyone who's had any health issues or has any conditions that may affect the ability to hold a class one medical. The last thing you wanna do is, is start your flight training, not have a class one medical yet and find out that you know, you're halfway through your flight training and that it's really hard to maintain one. Uh, you also get a good idea of if there's going to be any issues within the next five or ten years which may also affect your decision to become a commercial pilot because obviously well we all know the amount of money that you have to outlay uh, in your training and it just it'd be really sad for someone to not be able to hold a class one medical and have this large debt or have spent a lot of money to become a commercial pilot and you can't actually use it okay tip number three uh, what type of commercial pilot do you want to be? So uh, if you're new to aviation, then you might be thinking that there's not many options outside going to the airlines, but that's not true. I'd say there's more options in general aviation than what there is into the airlines. And depending on what type of pilot you'd like to be, if you want to fly for uh, the Royal Flying Doctors or you want to fly charter or if you want to drop skydivers locally, all of those require different ratings and different types of ratings on top of getting your CPL. So I do recommend that you look into what your end goal is and what it's going to take and what sort of ratings on top of your CPL it's going to require to get there. Which leads me into tip number four. Four? Just, yeah, tip number four. Find out what it really costs. So a lot of the time, it won't just be the CPL. The cost when you've spent, the cost of a CPL that can be anywhere between $75,000 up to $100,000, depending on how you trained and where you trained. But then you don't want to get to the end of your CPL to find out that you need to spend another thirty to $60,000 sometimes on ratings to get the requirements and the experience for the job that you need or the job that you want to have in the future. So do a lot of the research on what it actually costs to be a valuable pilot for the employment that you're looking for. Which leads into tip number five is how to pay for flight training. So in Australia, we have a few options for students. Uh, obviously, the first one is cash. So if you have you know, 100, 150 thousand dollars of cash uh, that you have saved up, or your family is willing to to lend you to pay for your flight training, then that's obviously the first option. And I'd also like to know if we can be friends. Another option we have in Australia for funding your aviation is vet fee funding, which is a government student debt. So similar to uni degrees, uh, where you can. You can get a debt from the government to fund your aviation and you have to pay it back once you earn over a certain amount in any job. So it's not just when you get a job within aviation you need to start paying it back. As soon as you start earning over $48,000, the government will, or your employer will have to automatically start taking some money out uh, to repay the debt. Okay, tip number six. Probably the most important one for me and for anyone who's married is make sure your spouse is on board with your plans and what what it's actually gonna take, the time that it's gonna take and the requirements uh, that it takes to become a commercial pilot. So just think about it this way. You're doing the theory of a university degree and on top of that, practical flying of 200 to 250 hours in the air. On top of that, you've got a similar amount of hours, I'd say, in flight planning 
So flight planning before, uh, two to three hours before a navigation flight especially. Um, you've got pre-flight debriefs, after flying debriefs with your instructor, travel to and from the airport to do those flights, uh, late nights or spare time in between work if you're working as well will be filled with the theory side and, and studying. Uh, normally if it's an integrated course you'll have two nights a week if you're part time where you may need to be at a location to do classes or you might have online classes which all of that is time so yeah there's no more Netflix and chill when you're trying to become a commercial pilot. And tip number seven. Yep, that's, that's seven. seven. Uh, tip number seven, pilot salaries. There's, we all know, we all hear the stories about the high paying jobs of first officers and captains in the airlines. And don't be fooled to thinking that as soon as you get your CPL in the first year or two from gaining a CPL, you'll be flying high, big salary, uh, loving life. A lot of the jobs straight out of a CPL or with your other ratings are equivalent to 40 or $50,000 a year. If you're younger, it might not be a problem as much, but if like myself, you're starting at a later age, you've probably got a job that earns more than that already. So you've got to be prepared to take that step backwards to move forwards in the future in aviation. Yeah, majority of your first jobs won't pay a lot. So yeah, just plan for that. Either uh, live frugally or have a lot of savings or I don't know, it's gonna be hard either way, but you need to know. Tip number eight, you will require an ASIC. So this is an ASIC card. Uh, basically, it's a aviation security identification card and you'll require one during your flight training and obviously after your flight training. It allows you to get into security controlled airports and areas of uh, the airports that um, are controlled by security. The reason I'm including this one as a tip is you do need to get an Auscheck criminal record, a criminal history report, whatever it is done. So yeah, they will check your background. So if you've got a shady background, then maybe becoming a pilot's not for you. I will do an extra video on some of these subjects as well that go into more detail. So uh, if you're not subscribed already and you're interested in those, then feel free to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and yeah, upcoming videos in more detail on some of these subjects. And tip number nine, the aviation industry cycle. So what cycle is the industry in at the moment? It does have a lot of ups and downs. <laughs> oh, that's bad. But what I mean by that is uh, currently we're in, we've got COVID all over the globe. It's affected aviation in a huge way. The reason that I've kept my training going is that I'm fairly optimistic that the industry, the, the world will sort COVID out and the industry will rebound. So, and because of the, the period of training I'm in, finishing my CPL, I still have a multi-engine rating and an instructor rating that I intend to do. So there's still a while until I become a valuable pilot for employers. So my theory is that if I have a year or two until I reach that level, that hopefully the industry starts to rebound by then and that we can get into some, uh, some work. And tip number 10, are you willing to travel for work? So a lot of the time your first jobs out of the CPL or your extra ratings will be remote. Uh, give you a, a bit of a, a head start or a better chance if you are willing to travel for work. It gives you more options, especially for those first jobs. Even once you get into, if you're willing to travel for airline careers, a lot of the bases that are in higher demand may be more remote for places like Qantas Links or Rex to be based in the country then that definitely gives you, uh, I'd say a little bit more of a, a head start into those first jobs. If you got some value from this video, please smash that like button down below. If you're not subscribed already, please consider it and hit that notification bell just to be notified of future videos I've got coming up. If you wanna watch some more content, I'll put some links on the screen somewhere here and you can subscribe using the logo. See you in the next one.